Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Today, one of my favorite topics of, of algebraic topology, namely uh, orientability or orientability in a homological distribution. So when I first learned that, I was pretty surprised. So usually I would think like something like homology is blind towards extra structure. So for example, homology can't detect embeddings or something like that. Um, and orientability, as we will see, as I will recall what this basically is supposed to be, is certainly an extra structure that can exist or on your manifold, or it, maybe it doesn't exist. So there might be orientable things, there might be non-orientable things, but certainly it's not an intrinsic property of the topological space, but more an extra additional um, data. Turns out that homology can still say something about orientability, which I personally find very surprising. And not just that it can say a little bit about it, but actually a pretty cool statement at the end. Uh, we'll see. But first, let's get started with the Möbius strip. What, what else? What else? Right, the Möbius strip, of course. So um, the Möbius strip is non-orientable in the following sense. So what is an orientation? Well, there are many ways to define an orientation. I would like to do the following. I would like to draw a coordinate system at a point. At each point of my Möbius strip, I draw a coordinate system. So I have a green one. As a red one here and a green one here. And I kind of like to continuously move it around the Möbius strip. So um, let's say I start here with my green one and I move it continuously around, continuously around. And at one point, because it's a Möbius strip, you will see um, that it kind of, kind of flips. So the red one becomes kind of the green one and the green one becomes a red one. Or in other words, the green one flips around or the red one flips around. So in, in this picture, what I've done is I've chosen two different coordinate systems or so two different, um, well, x and y axes on my Möbius strip. And if you vary them, as I said, continuously, it, it doesn't really work. So at one point they flip, there will be a sign involved and there will be a reflection involved and they flip. And this is what we call it's non-orientable. So there is no consistent choice of a coordinate system of like uh, your right hand that you can move along and no matter what you do, you move along your manifold, it kind of varies continuously um, or in this nice uh, rotation type fashion. And in this case, it just really gets reflected at one point. And naturally, there's nothing I can do if you think about it a little bit on the Möbius strip. There's just nothing I can do to prevent this. Um, you can do this at home if you want. If you build the Möbius strip and you start at one point drawing one of my coordinate systems and then draw it around the Möbius strip, as done here in this picture, you will realize at the end, if you go around once, um, it actually is flipped. And so you never vary it in each step, you just draw the same one again, but it, won't, it, it just flips itself by the construction of the Möbius strip itself. And that's what I would like to think about is orientability. So there are many definitions of orientability. This is the one I like most. So of orientability of a manifold is kind of a consistent choice of a coordinate system per point, which kind of makes sense because Locally, a manifold is, of course, a corresponding R to the N. So I could choose a coordinate system for R to the N. And I kind of want to, I kind of demand that this um, varies in a nice way as, as, as I long, uh, move along my, my manifold. OK, and obviously, there are non-orientable manifolds. Now, that's actually not obvious. So the Möbius strip is a relatively recent object. Uh, it's super easy to construct, but that is relatively recent. So it's not obvious, but we all know by now that there are non-orientable manifolds. So the question is, uh, what can actually homology say about orientability? As I said, naively would guess absolutely nothing because homology doesn't detect really extra structure. Uh, you need to more sophisticated tools to do that. But sometimes it actually does. And this is a really nice example when it actually works. Um, but before that, I would like to define home, uh, orientability for, for you. So this was kind of my idea what orientability is, and you make, can make this as a definition, but that's not a homological definition. Um, here's a homological definition of the idea of the homological definition. So what is an orientation? Well, as I said, an orientation is a certain extra choice you put on your manifold, say. And this extra choice should be such that it's preserved by rotations and is reversed by orient uh, by, by reflections. So here, I've chosen my coordinate system, uh, a red one, this is a start, and the blue one, same here, the blue one and the red one. And on the right-hand side, you have a reflection. And as you can see, they swap kind of, so if I want to draw an arrow from uh, blue to red, as I can do here, under rotation, this is a rotation by pi, 
the arrow still goes in the same direction. So it rotates in the same way. On a reflection, as you can see, the arrow is turned around. So um, my wish list for an orientation is that this is kind of a consistent choice of something, whatever that is, it will not be a coordinate system in the strict sense. It will be something different, we'll see. But anyway, of something that is preserved under rotations and is reversed under reflections. Strictly speaking, I should say it's preserved under rotations, translations, and scaling, but that's kind of built in to topology anyway. So translation and scaling, you, you don't really see that in, uh, in topology, but that's what you would do in, in the vector space definition. But anyway, for me, it would be just preserved under rotations reversed under reflections. That should be an orientation. And now comes kind of the main observation how to do this uh, homologically. So here's my manifold M. And as I said, the manifold is built that each point has a local neighborhood, which you actually can send to the corresponding R to the N. So here's a local neighborhood in R to the N. And this tells you the following. It's not very hard to see, actually. It's, it's not really hard. So if you take the homology and have an N manifold, so it works in the corresponding dimension, then uh, the homology of this pair, so the manifold and the manifold where you remove the point, which is kind of the, um, the little neighborhood of this point anyway, so this one here, that should be the same as doing the same for R to the N. And that's actually not hard to see that this is the homology of our good old friend, the sphere, just one down, um, because we kind of have removed one point. And we all know by now that this should be Z anyway. So this homology of this pair, a manifold, you poke point, and this is your pair, is actually Z. And we like Z very much. In Z, there is certainly a choice of an orientation in the sense that um, I can reflect or preserve it, right? So rotate and preserve it. And indeed, of course, on, on this space, S n minus 1, you have a nice action by rotations and reflections, uh, rotate and reflect. And they induce maps on homology. And it turns out that the maps on homology, uh, the rotation map preserves the sign, and the reflection map reverses the sign. So uh, rotation preserves sign, reflection reverses sign in uh, the corresponding homology with Z, which is pretty good, because that's exactly what we wanted from, uh, from an orientation. It should be preserved under um, uh, rotations and would be reversed under reflections. So kind of this is saying what it should be an orientation homologically. It should be a choice of plus or minus one in this B steer, which then secretly is actually this B steer. And that's exactly the definition. So you take an N manifold, um, really nice, and the local orientation is exactly a choice of a sign at this point that I just explained, right? So locally, this is a lo your local choice of a coordinate system. And the sign, you could think of it as like uh, encoding the orientation between the arrow. So whether it turns around clockwise or it turns around counterclockwise. Um, that's exactly the choice of the sign. And the global orientation is then a kind of a consistent choice of a sign, which I've written down here in, well, in algebra if you want. But it's kind of, you, you can't vary it too much. That's kind of the idea. And so locally, and globally, exactly like I, when I moved around the, the Möbius strip. So there was always, there's always a local orientation that's true for any manifold, but the question is whether there's a global orientation in the sense that for each point, so this is written down as I said here, so for each point you have a neighborhood and in this neighborhood, this associated sign doesn't change. And it's just not possible for the Möbius strip, right? But for example, possible for R2 itself. And if such a thing exists, I call a, a manifold orientable. This is pretty cool, right? This is a definition, homological definition of orientability, which only uses the fact that uh, a certain homology group is our good old friend, the integers. And in the integers, I have sense of direction uh, of plus or minus, and that's all I'm using here. And really, the second point here is that every x is a neighborhood uh, which, uh, we, where we can we kind of fix the same orientation. And the global condition just says you can glue everything uh, together. This is a really cool definition, by the way. Um, usually people like to do this over arbitrary rings. Um, so you could do this over arbitrary rings, taking the corresponding arbitrary, uh, taking the corresponding homology here, because this is always true. It just, you don't just don't get Z, but you would get your ring, underlying ring, and you would choose a generator in your ring. And um, rotations, again, would preserve the generator and reflections, again, would kind of um, 
might not preserve the generator. For Zmod 2, for example, they would preserve the generator as well. So kind of orientability, you can talk about R on orientability for your favorite ring, and then orientability depends on the ring. But the classical one would be Z over the integer square of plus and the minus. Basically, you have plus and the minus associated to every point. So this is a homological definition of uh, orientability. And it turns out that you could say a, a really a lot about manifolds just by looking at this definition. So here's the main theorem in this setup, or whatever the main whatever main theorem means. But if you have a closed connected n manifold, so maybe this doesn't quite work. But for example, Klein bottle down here will work. Um, so if you have a closed or Klein bottle, okay, if you have a closed oriented manifold, then your homology detects a, a, a sorry a closed connected manifold. Then your homology actually will detect whether it's oriented or not, orientable or not, which is not really the question, right? So it's saying that you have consistent choice. Of a, of a coordinate system on your manifold. And you can, can detect that just homologically by this very, very, very simple condition. So it is orientable if the nth homology group is z, and it is not orientable if the nth homology group is zero. And this is, by the way, these are the only possible choices, either z or zero, and it's either orientable or not. For example, you could do the torus. So the torus is obviously, whatever that means, orientable. And you can see that algebraically, which is the whole point, by just writing down its homology and seeing, oh, this is a two manifold, so, so n is two here. And indeed, it has a non trivial component, the, the corresponding component in for n equals two, which is pretty, it's, it's exactly what you want to see. And you do the same for the Klein model, and you'll see that this actually has zero, so it has no homology for n equals two. And this, without any further effort, would tell you that you can't just write down a coordinate system on the Klein model. And this is a cool theorem, right? So, I mean, for the torus, you could just do it. You just write down your local coordinate system. It's not so hard. And you move it around, and it will come back to what it is. So this would be an orientation, no problem. And for the Klein bottle, you kind of need to rule out that I mean, you do it, and it won't work. Um, but you kind of need to rule out why you can't do it. It's, it's, it's usually not enough to just, well, I tried several times, and I can't do it. It's usually not enough. Um, so here's a very precise and very simple uh, method to do it, just compute the highest corresponding homology, check whether it's zero or check whether it's z. If it's zero, it's non it's non orientable. If it's z, you're good to go. It's oriented. So I like this very much. Um, so let me wrap up. Orientability in terms of homology is the choice of a sign associated to each point, which is kind of can vary consistently along when you move along your manifold. And the choice of a sign is encoded in a certain homology group being Z, because in Z you can definitely say that something, you could choose the generator plus one or you could choose the generator minus one. Both of them generate Z. And then they have this really, really surprising, in my opinion, a strong theorem, which kind of detects orientability of manifolds in a very, very easy way. I liked it a lot. I hope you like it as well. And I also hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.